All righty, so good afternoon and welcome. And I'm so glad that you're here and thank you so much for taking some time to connect with me personally and to work on how to grow your business right now. So it's an interesting time. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, it's an interesting time in the world, isn't it? And for those of us that have been around for a while, um, Scott and I have been um, really just grateful and, and feeling so happy to be home together, enjoying a little more time together, although um, it is interesting, and I agree, it's an interesting time. And what we were kind of reminiscing on um, this week was that we got married on Y2K. So if anybody remembers what was happening in the world at that time, you know, we always joke about the fact that Scott and I got married 10 weeks after our first date. So you can, you know, count me out, you know, check me on this. So our first date was October 15th of 1999. And then we got married January 1st, 2000. And the night before we got married, we had an awfully fascinating evening, just sitting there wondering what was going to happen in the morning when the whole world went, you know, to whatever it was going to go to with the computers and nothing being able to work on Y2K and it all worked out just fine. And, um, you know, we're all grownups here. So you guys probably know where you were um, not much longer after that. I, I remember where I was when I got called early in the morning and a girlfriend uh, said, I know you don't watch the news, but you need to get out of bed right now and got up and turned on the television and watched the, um, the Twin Towers go down. It's pretty tough stuff. And, um, you know, the world did shift. We shifted in a lot of ways after 9-11. And some things we don't love and other things we're really grateful for that we've learned in hindsight. And, you know, moving fast forward, because I'm kind of giving you a 20 year history with Mr. Gisborne and I as business partners. Um, in 2007, we started getting the, you know, kind of the, watching the economy start to crash. It didn't just crash in 2008 for us. It started to really trickle down and we started seeing what's happening with tourism and travel. There was a lot of strange things happening. And, um, I, you know, I told this on the class this morning, so I apologize for being redundant for those of you that were here already with me t earlier today, but it was, um, you know, I have had nine companies since I was 23 and I've sold six of them and nobody ever asks me about the math, right? Like nobody ever says, okay, well, if you sold six of your companies, what happened to the other three? And I think this is a good time to bring this forward because just because nobody's asked, I just, I would be happy to tell them. Um, two of the businesses that, that I count in those nine businesses, we still have, right? We have legacy leaders and limitless women and all of that good work that we're doing with philanthropy and business growth, which is what brings you and I together today. And then the other business is a real estate business. It's going to be interesting to see how that affects that uh, for a while, you know, probably affect it for a while, but we'll move through like we always do. And then the third business um, that we don't really talk about is a business that we closed at the end of 2007, beginning of 2008. And it was uh, what I, you know, I have lots of takeaways of why we closed a business, but I can tell you that what is important here is that it wasn't easy from the beginning. And there's a different thing where things are flowing and when they're not, and, uh, and there was a lot going on in the world. So if you're in a position where you're starting a new business, you're going to want a different approach to those of us that have been in business for a little while today. So I think that there'll be value for you in either uh, perspective. I don't know how many people are here. We had like 55 people registered this morning. So, um, you know, we'll, I'll answer any questions that I can. If you want to write them in the chat, I'll answer them as I go along, or I can answer them at the end as well. Uh, we have 90 minutes. So whatever amount of time you have, you know, pop in, hop in, let me know what it is. And um, yeah, and go ahead and if you know that you have to be off early and you have questions, please don't wait till the end to ask them. Ask them as we go along so I can make sure that I take care of you. All right, so here's what it is, my loves. It's never um, been a better time for business. And I know that that sounds a little strange given what the context of what I was just sharing with you. And what I mean by that is that when things are disrupted, when there's a big disruption in the world, it creates an opportunity for innovation and it creates an opportunity to solve problems that weren't there before or we didn't see them before, right? So what's available is that we start to see things in a new way. And my first marketing mentor with Fabian Fredrickson, I remember her saying this, I just love this quote so much. She said, you know, when I need cash and I'm really like looking for how to do that, it doesn't usually come in a check in the mail right? If anybody gets mail anymore, it doesn't come in a check in the mail. It comes in an opportunity. And I was really thinking about that this morning, how much of an opportunity we have right now to 
be the creative, innovative people that we are. So everyone on this call who is an entrepreneur, right, you are an entrepreneur or else you wouldn't be here, um, has a, a little bit of what I consider a superpower. And that's the, having the ability to, um, to go ahead and see a problem in the marketplace and see a solution that others don't necessarily see, right? So this is a place we really wanna put our thinking caps on and think about how can we do things a little bit different? And for a lot of us, myself included, what's happening right now is, I believe kind of more on a spiritual level, we're being invited to look at the things that we might've put our head in the sand about, right? Because we can get in business and get into our comfort zone and kind of keep doing the things that we know and just keep going and going and going. And that's different than what's being called for right now, which is for us to actually get out of our comfort zone, right? And get to the edge of what we already know and start adopting and adapting to a new way of doing business. And, you know, for those of us that have been doing business from home for a while, it's not that much of a difference, right? But for a whole lot of people, it's going to be different. And for those of us that have been doing business from home, we need to get clear about what it looks like to network, in a, in a digital fashion instead of just getting out of the house, right? So networking is one of the most important things that we can do to build our business. And, you know, uh, I know many of you are like me, are eWomen members and love Nabo and love the Dames and love all the different places that we go to actually connect with, with our fellow uh, peers. And what's going on now is those people are still around they're just online. They're not going to be in places you're going to meet them in person. So one of the promises for today's call, and Tyra, yes, we're on Zoom webinar. Um, one of the promises for today's call is to really talk to you about what's effective networking. What can you do from home? You know, what does it look like to actually build relationships and how those relationships actually tie into your marketing and then how your marketing ties into sales with ease. So it's, you know, kind of a lot of content in a short period of time. And I'll do my best to really just kind of give you the integration of why I'm teaching you these three things specifically and how they result in you getting more clients and more customers. So is anybody interested in getting more clients and more customers? Please type yes for me if you are looking for more customers. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'm so excited. All right. All right. So one last thing about, um, about kind of the current state of affairs, and that is that uh, there's a man named Robert Schuler. He a, was a reverend. He's passed away now, I believe. Um, but one of his sayings was, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And what I want to say to you is that I feel that the way we as women, and Josh, thanks that you're here, and if there's other gentlemen with us, thank you for being here with us as a Limitless Women community. Um, the way that we do business is actually what's going to make us succeed now. The way that we are tough, if you would use that term, tough times don't last, but tough people do, what we do is we allow ourselves to get vulnerable. That's a place that's a little scary for us, right? We allow ourselves to share. We're big on collaboration. We're big on partnerships. And this time more than ever, that's going to be the key to you really blowing up your business, you really growing your business. It's how willing are you to get vulnerable and ask for partnerships? How willing are you to get out there and ask for referrals? How willing are you to put yourself out there with your marketing? So um, the first form that I have for you here was this one, two, three, my business model. So simple, you guys have seen this probably before, especially if you work with me or part of our world. What I want you to think about is that every business in the world is simply a solution, it, I'm sorry, it simply serves customers by providing a solution to a problem. Right. So whether what I don't want to go into what it is, but it really but if you look at your business, you've got a customer who's your ideal client or customer. And the more you know about that person, the better off you are. But we really focus on that is the who. Who is it that you're uniquely designed to partner with? Number two is what are they struggling with? What's the problem that they have that you have experience and wisdom and um, just knowledge and resources to help them. And then the third thing is, how do you uniquely partner with them? What I mean by that is, you know, what's great about our business, let me just kind of give you our business model, one, two, three, and then I want you to write this out for yourself, whether you have a form or a piece of paper. Who we work with is women, mature women entrepreneurs who are very purpose-driven, they're very smart, and they're very focused. What they're 
what they're really struggling with. Their number two shows up in two ways. It shows up in either they have cash flow, but they're not profitable, right? They might have a sustainable business model, but they haven't gotten the profitability figured out, or they struggle with um, really feeling like they never get it all done. No matter how many hours they work, no matter how much they do, they always feel like they're not where they want to be or where they should be. And the way that we uniquely partner with them is that we, you know, I love personal work. I love, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there that, um, you know, have followers and kind of keep themselves at a distance. For me, it's jo so joyful to be with you. So it's one of my great pleasures. I think it's where we stand out in the marketplace is that we truly partner with our clients and our clients become friends and our friends become clients. And it's a really juicy place. But what we do is that we take kind of the 30 years of what's tried and true in business, in my experience, over nine companies, what works, and we integrate that with their superpowers and what they're special about and what they're doing in the world and create kind of a new way for them to be seen and heard. And um, how many of you would say that you struggle with either the finding profitability, you don't have to say which one it is, or feeling like you never get it all done? How, can you just let me know? Just say yes, if you feel like either one of those things are issues for you. Both. Okay, cool. Cool. Thanks, Gigi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, good. So now I know who's here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Beautiful. Oh, Felicia, I love you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Those things are better since working with me. Thank you. I'm honored. Um, so, so the, here's the piece. Thank you, Pamela. So here's the piece. What I want you to look at for your own business model. And, and I know some of you are like, I've got this, I've done it. Do this little exercise, write this down and write down who it is that your business serves. You need to do it right now while we're on the phone, but this is something, again, where you've got some quiet time. The more that you spend time and attention honing the details, you know, one of our, um, one of our company's core values is love, and we, and we elaborate on that to say that love is in the details. So we really look at all the places that we can love on you and touch you and have you feel special and nurtured. I want you to think about in your own business model, really who your business serves, what do you know today in March of 2020 that you didn't know when you were crafting your elevator pitch, right? When I hired Fabienne and back in 2012, I paid her $15,000 to join one of her programs. And I said, listen, all I need is this thing called an elevator pitch. This is what everybody keeps telling me I need it. I'm like, I don't know what that means and what it is, but clearly I need one because I have no idea what that is. So it was a very like formulaic thing and I never used it. Right? I never used it. So you guys know, if you've been friends of mine for a while, I always say like, when somebody asks me, what do you do? I say, I do a lot. How about you? Um, you know, this place of connection is not about having an elevator pitch, but what it is about is having you be positioned and strong and grounded in what you know. So when you do this exercise for yourself of who your current favorite people are, that you love to work with and what you know about them and what their struggle is, kind of what their top of mind struggle is. So, you know, the bigger mission of our work is to heal the poverty consciousness of women business owners so that they can join us as philanthropists and share the resources around the world. That's not what people hire me for, right? So I want you to understand that when you're looking at what are they struggling with, what's present of mind for them? Right? So that's what I'm saying. The place around profitability or cash flow is present for our clients. Really what's usually underneath is a whole nother conversation. But what we want to do is meet them where they are and be able to love them through whatever that struggle is, right? And partner in a way that they know that they're seen and heard and they know you get them, right? You guys have any questions about the business model piece? Going once, going twice. Okay, perfect. Thank you for sharing those of you that want to kind of hone this and tune it up. What I want you to do is to get clear on that so that when you are networking, you can be quick with your language of who it is that you serve and what you do, right? You want to be able to get that down to a sentence or two, and it needs to be authentic and present. And this is another thing too. Most of us are women who serve women. We have a little bit of a bullshit meter, you know, pardon my French, but we do. And, and when things don't feel resonant for us, 
We're not always sure why or how, but it makes it difficult for us to do business with someone. So when I go now into kind of what, what it looks like to network, what that looks like with your marketing, what that looks like with sales, I want you to be thinking about, again, your clarity and your groundedness in yourself is so important. And um, we're all doing the best we can. So how it shows up one day may be a little different than how it shows up another day. I had an invitation um, a couple weeks ago to speak with a, a television producer. A girlfriend of mine has a show that was picked up by OWN and she wanted me to speak to the producers from Lionsgate. And I had a great conversation with the producer. And it's funny because when we got to the end of the call, um, I said to her, I said, what do you need in your business and how can I support you? And she just started laughing hysterically. She was like, I cannot believe you just asked me that. And I was like, well, you know, I, I'm kind of like a small person in the world, but I, I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people. And she was like, no, it's not that at all. She said, I just have never had anybody ask me that. Everybody wants something from me. Nobody asks me, how can I help you? And I thought, you know, this is who we are. This is who we are as women entrepreneurs is we love to support each other. We love to connect. And so, um, I'll tell you, this really ties into the sales with ease conversation. Not that I was trying to sell her something, but just building the rapport, building the relationship, that kind of that giving first and really being of service and being in the energy. Uh, I said to her, and I, I'm going to call her Michelle. That's not really her name. But I said to her, I said, Michelle, um, if I heard you correctly, these are the projects you're working on. And I repeated back to her kind of the things we had talked about. And this is the talent that you're looking for for these specific projects. Did I get that correctly? And she said, yes. Well, that's actually step four of our sales with ease process. And when we get to that, you'll know what I'm talking about. We come back to it. Um, and it was interesting because I said, great, well, I have some resources that maybe you used to, would you, would you be interested in having them? She said, yes. And so it was interesting how the stuff I'm teaching you today, the stuff around like, the effective language of building relationships. And some of you are so masterful at this. So again, thank you for being here with me and just supporting the work and supporting the love for others. Um, some of you like really could be teaching this class. Uh, but you know, for me, what I find is that some of this language, these tiny distinctions make an exponential difference in your life and how you show up in the world and what kind of results you get in the world. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those tiny details, okay? So, um, to be continued with Lionsgate, by the way, I'll tell you what's going on there later. Um, so here's the deal. So we know who, what, and how, right? Who we're serving, what they're struggling with, and how we support them. And that allows us to network effectively. That allows us to be able to get out and say, tell me about you. What do you do? What, how can I help, right? Just that conversation, that can be done I'm getting so many Facebook messages right now and I'm putting out so many Facebook messages. I think this is the piece that I want you guys to really remember. When, um, so a lot of you know Jacob, my son, my little scientist, he's a geneticist now. Um, but when he was in college, he took a job selling books door to door, he worked for a company called Southwestern. They've been in business forever. Um, and his quota was to knock on 80 doors a day, eight, zero, 80 doors a day. And I thought about that this morning as I was trying to get ready for you guys and, and, and teaching this class. And I thought about, wow, what would our businesses look like if we did 80 reach outs a day? Now, there's a lot of great things happening with automation. There's a lot of great things that we can do with our list. There's a lot of great things we can do with social media. But I'm here to tell you, you have right now in your telephone and in your Facebook friend group, and in your Highland Bruce, I love you. And in your LinkedIn group and probably on Twitter. And I just, I haven't gone on Twitter. So I apologize. I can't teach you anything about Twitter because I'm no good at it. I have about 6,000 people there, but we just link it together. So let me, you know, just say that as an aside. The places that I do know where we get clients and we get connections again and again and again are Facebook and LinkedIn. And now it's becoming Instagram for us. People are DMing me, they're sending me messages and, you know, we're trying to be out. Luckily, Eric is here from LA over the last few weeks. So um, she's <laughs> like, ah, how do we get this on Instagram? Uh, we're figuring it out. And this leads me into the next step or the second thing I want to teach you about, which is marketing. What's current and relevant and what can you do? So what you can do is be consistent and be adding value with your marketing, right? So here's the deal. We have this idea that like all these cute quotes are gonna do it. I don't think so. 
I like the quotes. I like to make them, you know, I just made a really cute one. You guys are gonna see on my social media this week, but I just, that's not what people engage with, right? People engage when you're doing this kind of stuff, when you're teaching classes, when you're adding value, when you're doing Facebook lives. I did my first Facebook live this morning. I was terrified. It went fine, but I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I couldn't, couldn't figure it out. And I did, I figured it out on time. It was wonderful. So you can do it, right? Right now, there's some things that are at the edge of your comfort zone. You haven't been doing them. And I'm encouraging you to like, take a look at that. Make a list for yourself of what are the things that you know that if you just put a little bit of focus there, your follow-ups, your emails. The other thing that I want to tell you um, that's really important for those of you that are content creators online, which should be all of you, regardless of what your industry is, you should be content creators. And we'll get into that when we do Q&A if you're interested. Content is very valuable for people, especially when they're feeling lost and emotionally disrupted. So there's something again in the comfort of learning and studying. So I encourage all of you to be really getting clear about what kind of programs you can be offering. I encourage you again to offer a lot of stuff for free. This is what we call the courtship in our experience of what we do in our marketing world. And that leads people to trust you and that trust is priceless. And when they start trusting you, then they can take the next leap, which is to work with you, all right? So this is our marketing funnel. I'm gonna kind of just fill it in while I talk to you. Um, and you can kind of see what I'm doing here without it hopefully being too complicated. So I joke about this, but I think, you know, we have a few lifetime members that are even on this call right now. And a lifetime investment to work with our company right now, it's a three-year commitment. It's a $100,000 investment. Nobody on this call that's not in the program got up this morning and said, oh, let me just go become a lifetime member of legacy leaders in the Limitless Women community. It doesn't work like that. When we move into what happens for marketing and how it integrates with sales, what I want you to be thinking about is what's the lifetime value of your relationships and is it worth your time to court them? Is it worth your time to do this marketing? Is it worth your time to actually be engaged in a consistent way? And the answer is yes, <laughs> it is, right? So in our um, marketing funnel, and I gave you a blank one so you can fill out your own, this kind of top level up here, we call this courtship. This is all the stuff that we do for free. We do free gift Friday. I'm doing this class right now. We do articles. We've, uh, thanks to Josh, we've got our podcast ready to go starting next week. We have YouTube trainings. Uh, I just got invited to write for another magazine. We do interviews on other people's podcasts. So here's the deal. I'm just writing down a few of the things that I do in my world right? Interviews, Free Gift Friday. Free Gift Friday is our email campaign. You guys should all be on the list for that. If you're not, go to freegiftfriday.com and get on. Um, we send stuff out. So every week, we're literally sending out free stuff, sending out value, looking for ways to really help people. And what I want you to know in the sales process is this. Most large organizations that have sales teams, they look at closing a percentage of their prospects. Um, with internet marketing, it can be so small. It can be like a half of 1%, but that's not what we hear, right? We hear all these big million dollar numbers. I'm here to tell you, this is the, the, the real poop, okay? In a traditional sales organization, let's use real estate as an example, they, ho they hope to close around 10% of the people that they talk to. So that means they get nine no's for every one yes. This goes back to the thing where I was talking about knocking on 80 doors. If you want 10 new clients and 10 sales, how many people do you need to talk to if you have a 10% close? Anybody want to guess? Write it in the chat so I can drink my vitamin water. No, yay, Maria, yay, Ro, yay, Ann. Okay, you can do math, good job, thank you so much. All right, cool. So, it's not complicated. I promise you, you know, the big secret to making more money is serving more people. Let me say that again. The big secret to making more money is serving more people. It's not complicated. So this is the place that we're all being challenged and invited to expand. And I promise you for all the brick and mortar businesses that I've had and that my girlfriends still have a lot of them, we are so blessed to have social media. We are so primed right now as leaders and people who are thinking outside the box and innovative and the rebels like Anne, 
we have an opportunity to totally blow up our business right now. Not at the cost of anyone, but because people are hungry and they are waiting. They're waiting for us to talk to them, okay? So I want you to really get your courtship in order and start thinking about all the ways that you can add value and get your message out there. And if you need help on that, you know, let me know. And I'm excited to support you with what those ideas are, right? And also please be patient. Rome wasn't built in a day. What happens is consistent recurring actions actually drive the results you get. And it's not a complicated thing, right? We've all heard this, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits watch your habits, they become your character, and watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Now, we change that in Legacy Leader sometimes and make it your legacy, um, but this is really the piece. We're all on the same routine. Yeah, Ro, congratulations, you're starting a daily Facebook Live, awesome. This is a great time to be the bearer of good news. In our um, Legacy Leader call this morning, I was sharing that I was listening to, um, I'm a big fan of Lakewood Church, and I was listening to a sermon with Joel and Victoria Osteen a couple weeks ago, or maybe last week, I can't remember now, um, but Victoria made this comment about the light shines the brightest in the darkness. And I just thought, man, this is the time for us. This is the time for us to be the bright lights. This is the time for us to show the good news. How can we lift each other up and help people not feel scared, right? Feed our faith, not feed our fear. And, you know, I get we're all doing the best we can each day, but I, I look to you guys as the leaders because you're here and you're raising your hand and saying, hey, I want to grow. I want to expand. I want to help more people. So one of the most important things you can do that will actually help with your courtship is get out there right now and be the voice of good news. And we're looking for, if you guys are not on Free Gift Friday, let me know, but if you are on Free Gift Friday and you go back and see, uh, what day is today? Today's Saturday. <laughs> oh, I like it living in a bubble right now. Um, if you look at yesterday's Free Gift Friday, I sent out you know, a notice that I was doing this class. And then I was like, if you cannot stand the idea of thinking about business, watch this video and try this at home. And it was such a cute video that we found on Instagram of like these kids that had been home for six days and they like threw the ball and it went down a, a you know, like a, a slide and then it, they did dominoes and then the cat grabbed the ball and then it ended up in the bucket and everybody was screaming and laughing. It was so great, right? Let's bring some levity. Let's bring some lightness. This will pass. This time is going to pass. And some of us are going to come out way stronger. And I want that to be all of us on this call. You know, you guys are showing up, looking for help, looking for guidance. I want us to be the ones that share resources and ideas and make it happen and make a shift. Okay. So networking online, start reaching out on Facebook messenger, start posting in the groups that you belong to. Uh, the group that I was uh, teaching classes in this morning called women helping women entrepreneurs. If you're not in that group, please get in that group. There's 300,000 members. Uh, Christina Rowe, who's the, who's the founder of that is a genius. She has some higher level classes you can buy, but even just getting in that group, you'll start to network. You'll start to connect. Everyone there is connecting and they're following each other on Instagram and, and doing business with each other. You'll see it in the threads. It's really fantastic. So I highly recommend you get in there and let's move back to what's happening with your marketing. Okay. What you can be doing is the, the activities that I'm talking about. When you're positioned, you're gonna need to, if you're going from um, cold to sold, right? Like from zero to hero, you're not gonna go right to your lifetime deep relationships. Understand that you need to have some sophistication in your offerings, meaning that um, we built this business to multiple six figures when I did nothing but free and high level, because I just only wanted deep partnership. This is like the only place I wanted to play. And we brought out other offerings over the years, like our live events. I mean, our, we're doing Limitless Women. I tell you guys, because you're here, we're hosting Limitless Women virtually for the first time. It's our sixth annual Limitless Women event. Monica Nirakawabwa from Girl Up Uganda is going to be zooming in from Africa. Um, we're working on how to make it fun. Oh, hi, Betsy. Good to see you here. Uh, we're working on how to make it fun, how to make it engaging, how to make it worth your time to spend a Saturday with us. We'll have a cocktail party on Friday night, have our full day Saturday of training and networking. And we've got breakout rooms so we can put you in small groups where you can actually see and hear each other and talk 
and get to know each other and kind of move around and really get some, some great connections going there where you're sharing your resources. And I'm going to offer on Sunday one-on-one -on -one love seats. So anybody that just really wants to have some personal coaching from me, um, we normally do that on Saturday evening as an unplugged thing, but I'm going to do that on Sunday. So whoever wants that, uh, just know that that's coming up. All right. So what other things in your marketing funnel are you driving? Thanks, Anne. What other things are you driving people to? You know, you've got your big packages and I want you to always speak about your big packages when you're sharing your goods. Okay. Right now, our biggest package, which I can't imagine, <laughs> let me say, I can't imagine it being more expensive than it is right now. It's a hundred thousand dollar investment. That's not a small investment, but it's three years of private business partnership with me. And my husband always says, he thinks that it is like, I'm totally undercharging. because I have a lot of friends who charge a hundred thousand for one year. Um, but the idea of having me as your business partner for 30,000 a year is not bad, right? There's something great there. So I think that you've got to figure out in your own business model, what's that high place you'd like to move into. I'm there now in 2020. I was not there in 2012 right? It's like grown as I've learned how to build more value and add more value to my client base. But what I want you to look at is like, what's your aspirational, like great lifetime relationship with people that you love to work with? And then what are all the pieces in between? And in your marketing funnel, those are kind of the other things. So for our world, we do events. Um, we normally charge $4.97 for our live event of Limitless Women, $9.97 for our flow retreat, where I teach on finance, financial literacy, financial leadership, cash flow, profit and loss. That's a retreat that we're doing twice this year. Um, that's normally $9.97. Then we have business school, right? And business school is a $5,000 one-time investment for a lifetime access. It also includes personal coaching with me. Then we have different levels for our legacy leaders. We have people that are coming in to build, that are starting their businesses, and we have people that are in business for a while that are moving in to grow. All of these have different levels and different investments, right? So in your own marketing funnel, I want you to fill this out for yourself. It's very important that you know that when you have a conversation, right, you've met somebody, you've done your, um, you've done your, uh, your nurturing and your courtship stuff that I've been talking to you about, and now you're gonna get into telephone calls. The, it doesn't go telephone call lifetime, right? It goes telephone call maybe to an event. Event maybe to business school. Business school maybe to builders. What happens often because I work with women that are um, well established when I meet them is they might go from courtship to an event or a telephone call or something like that into growing if they already have a well established business. But in order to be in a lifetime relationship in our world, we ask that you work with me for a whole year and that I work with you for a whole year first. So we make sure we like each other, right? It's a, it's a big commitment to say, let's go to bed for a lifetime. Sorry to be rude. It's a big commitment to do that until you've worked with each other. So I want you to be thinking about it again, how each of your offerings kind of move down. Yes, ma'am. How each of your offerings move down into the next level. Okay. And what you'll see is again, the revenue. So we'll, you know, there's, I could go on and on and on about how we do it in our business, but what I want more importantly is for you to have your clarity on what it looks like in your world, okay? In your world, what are the offerings that you're having? And you may not have this many. Like I said, we built this business to, to multiple six figures um, without anything but one offer. And that was a deeply invested, at the time it started at $10,000, right? And then that moved and kept moving and we started having more things break off. So if you're newer in business, what's the one great offer that you have? What's the pricing you feel comfortable with? And this is a great way um, for you to use me actually, if you wanna have a telephone call. I'm really great at making money. Um, there's, I have nothing to sell to you today. I just really wanted to come and love on you and give you value. But I also know that some of you want some personal, you're gonna have some questions you may not be comfortable asking here. So please write to me, you know, write to, you have my, um, you know, my Facebook connection, obviously, or send me an email at laura at lauragisborne.com. That'll come right to me. And uh, if you want to have a telephone call to talk about your pricing or your offerings, because that clarity is so important. Okay. Are we good with that? Cool. Anybody have any questions at this point before I move into sales? So far, so good. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great. Okay, cool. So next piece is sales with ease. So sales with ease is so brilliant and so important as a formula for building relationships and actually doing it in a way that's graceful and, um, and lasting. 
You know, I think it's an, it's an amazing thing when we have people, not everybody that comes through our world becomes a lifetime client, right? But I have this incredible amount of beautiful friendships that have come out of trust and great relationships. And when I was talking to uh, the producer I was talking about earlier today, um, this piece around, you know, that's a friendship building conversation um, because it's all geared towards service. Right. So the seven step formula you have on this form, and if you don't have, again, any of these forms, let us know and we will make sure to put them, Josh and I'll figure out between now and the time we host the recording, um, how to get these to you. So the seven step formula, I'm going to go through it pretty quick. We have this training available on YouTube if you want a deeper dive into sales with ease. Um, you can find, it, I've taught it as a webinar several times over the years, and the formula is the formula, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't, doesn't really change. So the first step in sales with ease is for you to have a beautiful servant heart and understand that psychology is their psychology and your psychology. So their psychology is, again, they didn't come here to buy something in this conversation. They came to the conversation because they wanted to connect with you and hopefully find a solution to their problem. But they don't know that you are the person who has the solution to their problem. So a lot of times, again, just in networking, the psychology is showing up and having this beautiful conversation. And I want to clarify this because it's important. Hi, Debbie, we'll make sure we get you the, get you the forms. They're actually in the chat, sweetheart, if you can't. Um, if you can't find them. Josh, would you mind posting them again? One, two, three. That was helpful when you did that a little while ago, if you don't mind doing it again. Um, so the, the sales with ease process, I want to really clarify this because a lot of you have been trained to have one sales conversation and then rely that that is actually the end all be all. And that is not my experience. In my experience, relationships take a little time to nurture we um, joke in our world that marketing is foreplay and sales is the deed. And what we want you to do is really get good at marketing and good at foreplay, but not stay stuck there. Okay. And we want you to have sales conversations that are very integrated with the whole experience of your brand and who you are. So everything from the time they meet you in a networking environment, virtually or in person, when we're all back in the world in person, to the languaging and how you present yourself in your marketing materials, the courtship, right? The value you add. And then the sales conversation, because I can tell you that there's some weird Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing, Mrs. Hyde in our world, that happens sometimes in sales. People get really like funky and they get uh, aggressive in the sales conversation and that never, ever has to happen. Never has to happen. So the psychology again is we're in business to be of service. First and foremost, I promise you, if you get motivated about reaching a million people and serving a million people, you will never have to worry about, do I have enough cash, right? That's not the issue. There's other issues. So you want to just keep looking at how do I serve? That's the first psychology. People are not looking to buy something. They're looking to get a result. Josh, they're still saying that they're getting a, um, they're getting error messages. Okay. Laurel, all right, go ahead and put Heidi down for the nap. It was so nice to have you here, sweetie. I can't wait to catch up with you. Okay, which, um, which uh, let me pause right here. Which um, model, which of the three are you getting the error message? Marketing funnel, business model, or sales with ease? Which of the three are you getting the error message for? Because that could be helpful for us. Okay, sales with ease is the one we're all having a hard time getting, Josh. Okay, so we'll get that one to you. So hang in with me because your paperwork's coming. You can write it down, like I said, on a piece of paper. Number one is psychology. That's the first step in staying in the right head space. Number two is warm up. Now, warm up happens often in networking and marketing. You're starting to build relationships with people in those spaces, not necessarily in the sales conversation. It's very rare that you're going to meet somebody on the street who's a stranger and you're going to go right into warm up and discovery and trying to close a sale it just doesn't work like that. That's why these three things are the important keys for building your business. You need all three and they're very integrated. Are you with me? Make sense? Yes. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. So we've got psychology of service. We're warming up, making friends, right? Now we go to discovery. So discovery is so simple, but it can't happen until you're warmed up. So it's kind of like, oh good, Lynette got her, her, got herself, I'm glad. It's kind of like this, you can't go right to again, 
the close of a sale if you don't actually know what's going on. So you've got to learn how to build relationships quickly. And the best way I know to do that is to remember this piece here, which I'm going to write down for you, W-I-I-F-M. Does anybody know what that stands for? I know somebody does. Yep. What does it stand for? Write it up. What's in it for me, right? So every human is a little designed to be egocentric, right? It probably comes back from, a, thank you, all of you seem to know what it is. It comes back to our survival mechanisms, right? What's in it for me? So when you're warming up and you're networking, you want to be talking about who? Not yourself. You want to be talking all about the other person, right? That's the, pro that's the practice. The practice is becoming very present and really listening from your whole heart for what you love about this person. There's an energetic that gets created that's really beautiful and really easy, but it takes practice, okay? So some of the questions that I use in discovery, you've already heard one, which is, what do you need most right now in your business and how can I support you? That's, you know, I mean, that's the context of everything that we do at eWomen Network. As you guys know, I've been an eWomen member since 2011. Um, and, and this is really tried and true. We're looking at what's tried and true in business combined with what's current and relevant because you need both of those things together to actually be successful today, right? So really getting into what's going on for them. You know, ask and then zip. Just listen. Just become a very good listener. Now, we look at psychology warming up and then finding out what's actually going on and the more present you are the more that people will open to you and the more they'll trust you which are keys that are so vital for them to partner with you if they want you to work with them for a solution right so this next piece is going to sound a little silly but it works like a charm and that is step four which is information confirmation and what we do is that when i'm having a conversation with somebody like this producer I say, oh, so if I heard you correctly, you have this and this and this going on, and you're having a challenge around finding this person and this person. Did I hear you correctly? I mean, I promise you, it is literally the simplest thing in the world to repeat back to someone what they said in their own words, and it is a huge game changer. It changes the game, because what it says to the person on the other side is that you really care about them, that you're actually listening to what's going on for them. You're not in a hurry to start pitching your stuff, right? These four steps are absolutely the key to all of your dreams. <laughs> Felicia, you might have a different thing, but I'm telling you that like, if you get good at these four things, you can rule the world. I mean, you, you, you really have um, earned the right to have a friendship and have an authentic connection with the other person. And service really happens, right? It's a little different than mirroring well because mirroring is like, I would take that as parroting, right? Like repeating back what they're saying in their own language. It's, um, there's conscious listening and there's a lot of training in psychology about this. What I'm inviting you to do is to actually, bye Elizabeth, what I'm inviting you to do is to actually go deeper. Really, when I say listen with your whole heart and really care about what's being said, really care about what they are struggling with in a way that your, your whole being is so unilaterally focused on that one person that you don't see anybody else around. There's no place else you'd rather be. And they know it and feel it and you do too. And here's the part that's a little bit of a slippery slope, my friends. You may get to this phase of the process and you may not have the solution and that's okay. It's so fine. It's so fine if you're not the solution, but you might have a resource and you might have an introduction. And this is the place I'm inviting you to just keep showing up and being consistent and keep serving and keep giving. You know, in our world, we believe that giving causes growing. When we're expanded, we don't go back. We go to a new place, right? And we build new relationships and new things. So in the sales process, if you know that you are not, this is not your one, two, three. This is not the person who's your ideal person. This is not a problem that you're actually designed to work with. And the partnership's probably not going to fly. How else can you love them and leave them here? What I'm inviting you to do is to just not pitch. Don't pitch. 
stop pitching. <laughs> stop pitching. I don't know how to say it. Like just stop your pitch and actually be present. What you want to do at this point is if you have a solution, we're going to go on. If you don't, I want you to gracefully either say, I don't have a solution and I'll be listening for how I might be able to help you in the future. Can we stay in touch? Right. Or this is not what I do. You need to meet my friend Felicia. This is actually her area of expertise. She'd be a great person for you. May I make an introduction for you? Okay. So let's say it is all lined up and you've got the right person and the right problem and it's all sounding right. Would you repeat back to them? Did I get it correctly? They're going to say yes or no. Okay. And then the next thing is I want you to uncover their objections. I want you to ask them why they're not getting a solution. They may not know that they can get a solution to their problem. You've earned the right to ask this question. You want to say, um, what would keep you from taking action on getting this solved? You know, is it, what's getting in the way of you having this solution? And the answer could be, I don't know, because I don't know how to solve it. Then you, then you can kind of move forward and say, okay, great. Well, I think I might know how to solve it because my friend Ro had a very similar experience and together we were able to call, you know, create a solution. And as a result, this is what's happened in her business. If we could do the same thing together, you and I, what would keep you from moving forward today? This is really important. You don't have to talk about what you do. What you have to talk about is the solution to their problem in their words. It is very common for people to sign up to work with me and say, okay, great. I have no idea what we're going to do or what I bought. Help me. What are we doing? Because there's such a level of trust. And I, I believe that comes from coming with my whole heart. And I know if I can do it, you can do it too. With me? Yep. If we could create the same result for you, what would keep you from moving forward today? Yeah, this is, this is important. Because you want to know what's holding them back now. You don't want to like spill your guts and talk all about you and how great you are, da, 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 and then they get glassy eyed and then you're like, okay, great, let's do it. And then they're like, uh, no, I've got all these other problems. Okay, <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. I do try to bring my whole heart. So this place of uncovering the objections. So then you uncover what's holding them back and let's say that it's money. I'm not sure I have the money or I'm not sure I have the time. This is common, right? You say like, okay, so we could find something that was a solution for you that was comfortably affordable, that you know you could do it without taking food off the table or a roof over your head. What else would keep you from taking action today? And then they might come with like, God, I'm so busy, da, 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 da. Okay, so do you have a commitment that you actually want to solve this problem or are you really committed to staying in the struggle? Yeah, that's a hard question to ask people. But if you come in with your whole heart, you know, again, you're not trying to be critical. You're saying like, I'd love to help you, but I can't help you if you're not ready, right? And you want to let people know that you're there when they're ready. And at the same time, you don't have to, you don't have to pitch. Get the idea? Okay. So if we're going along this path and things are going really well, it, it, and, and why I'm giving you all these places of backing out is that for me, it looks like this. If one out of 10 is going to become a client, and, and I'm really high ticket world, right? So it's probably less than one out of 10. It's probably more like one out of 100. I don't want to spend my time and my energy trying to convince them to invest in themselves or to solve their problem if they're not there. I want to love them. I want to build a great relationship. I want to earn their trust and I want to stay in touch. This is where they go back to free gift Friday or we stay connected through social media, but they are going to leave that conversation with like, I love this woman. Not only did she give me a great resource, I didn't feel like I could afford to work with her right now, but I got to tell you, those people are out being my soldiers everywhere in the world. So when I meet somebody, they're like, oh my gosh, I've been hearing about you. Three people have talked to me about you this week. Hopefully, God willing, knock on wood, they're talking good about me, right? I think they, I think they are. Because I would say that, like, well, what, would they, what did they say? Hopefully it was good. We joke about it. But yes, so those people, that goodwill, that energy out in the world of service is part of the sales process because their words are more valuable than my words. Are you with me? 
everybody following me this because I'm getting a little up here now. I'm kind of getting at the higher view. Yes. Okay, Ro, you are. So it, you know, for me, however many it is, it is what it is. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, it's making sense. I'm so glad. So when it is a yes, let me tell you how it actually shows up more often than not. Thank you, Anne. Is that I'm on a call. I am warming up. I'm finding out all about you. I am loving you. I am repeating back to you what you said and really getting clear in my mind and my heart. Is there any way I can support you? I might be giving you resources right there. And usually what happens when I have a client is they say to me, how do I work with you? <laughs> like They can't stand it anymore. So you know this energetic, think about the waves, right? Like I'm giving and giving and giving and there's like a natural like coming back, right? Giving and receiving. Sometimes people feel so full, they're like, this is fantastic. How do we go deeper? That's when I know for sure we're on the right track, right? Because they're asking me instead of me trying to tell them, okay? And if we haven't got there, but they're kind of open to it, I can just say, I'm not, thank you, Ron. I'm glad you're my soldier, sweetheart. Thank you. I'm not sure if this is going to be a solution for you, but all I can do is share with you what has worked for other women that I've had the honor of partnering with. You know, this is the piece. It's a very intimate relationship I have with my clients. It's not, um, you know, I'm available and, and it's my pleasure. And I want you to have that in your own business. Whatever you decide is your superpower that you're bringing to solve problems in the world. I want it to be your pleasure to be with people. So in the sales process, as you're listening, you're listening carefully for like how to serve, but also is this a good partnership for both of us? I want you to also understand this distinction of you choosing them instead of them choosing you. Where I see my girlfriends get stuck again and again is kind of what we wrote about a lot in the second book, Limitless Women, around the limiting beliefs. Who am I to? What if I'm not good enough? What if I don't have the resources she needs? What if, what if, what if, what if, instead of really trusting yourself in the, that's why I had you do the one, two, three. This is my lane. This is what I'm made for. I've been doing the same work in some form or fashion for 30 years. Clearly, it's not what I thought I was going to do when I grew up, but God had a plan, right? In your own life, you have certain skills and certain superpowers that you've been honing and honing and honing, and it's natural, right? It's natural for you. So when you know that, you can listen for your service. And if you can't serve there, like I said, you can make a referral, you can make an introduction. Are you with me? Yep. Okay. So the solution to the problem, this is what it is. Now, the seventh issue is an incentive to take action now. The incentive in our world is not to drop your price, my friends. And I'll tell you why. It's really important. If you have a client that has bought a program with you, from you, for themselves for $5,000, and then you turn around and give that product to someone else for $2,000, you now no longer have price integrity. Let me say that again. We want everyone to be really transparent about what the investment is and when it's right for them and if it's right for them to join us. We don't want to start having a little bit of this over here and a little bit of this over there. That doesn't serve. And some of you I know very well on this call, you get into this slippery slope and I'm inviting you to stop. When I talk about step seven in the incentive for taking action now, what extra can you give? So don't change your price. Think about a deeper level of service or a deeper honor you can give to someone, right? Some reason for them to take action. So at this point, up, to, up until now, thanks Felicia, um, because I don't know how it's going to move forward necessarily, but our legacy leader clients, one of the bonuses they got for taking action was to have a VIP retreat at my house. We used to do them in Sedona. Now we do them in Colorado. That is a standalone product that we sell for $10,000. That's a nice bonus. We don't change the price of what's happening for the year, but what we're saying is if you decide to do the year, let's do this too. And that's a nice gift. We could certainly do the year without having them come to my house and having a retreat, but it's, it's a good match. It allows them to get to know me, me to get to know them. We get to go deep into the work and, you know, it sets us up for the year so beautifully. So recap, get 
marketing online by networking. It doesn't cost you anything. Get into your groups, start sharing your value, sharing your gifts, sharing free stuff. Don't be afraid to give away free. It's really important. Free is how we get to know you. The more you can give away, the more you can offer value to the community at large, the faster you're gonna find your people, okay? Um, the marketing piece again of what does it look like to really understand that nurturing takes some time and how are we bringing people into the next level when it's right for them? The sales with ease process of it being kind of, again, that nurturing, that warm up, that discovery, and really keeping your head on straight that it's all about them and it's all about service. So who has questions now? I'd love to open it for questions. And I apologize that I don't know because I'm on a, a Zoom webinar, how to hear your voice. But if you could just type for me, if you have any questions, that'd be great. And if you have personal questions that you'd rather not have you know, publicly, then um, send me a message on Facebook right now. And I will, I'm not on Facebook because I'm doing one thing right now. But when I get on Facebook again, I'll send you the link to my calendar and we can have a one-on-one -on -one call. Um, so if there's anything you're feeling a little private about right now and you'd rather talk personally, um, I'm happy to do that as well. All right, Josh said there's a Q&A section at the bottom where everyone can type in their questions that will go to Laura. Where is that funny? Do I know? I don't know how to make that work. I see, oh, Q&A, hot dog, no questions. They can just do it in the, you guys can just do it in the chat if you want to, um, unless you know how to do at the bottom of the, of the screen, I guess there's a thing that says Q&A, whichever you like, whichever you like. So I think if you just type to me right here and it's working in there, Lynette, I give good advice. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so good to be with you, Lynette. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again, one-on-one -on -one and catching up and seeing how you are. Hoping that your family's well. Okay, somebody put a, Q, a question in the Q&A. I found it. Well done, Laura. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. Did you have a question, honey? Was there anything in the sales process that you had questions about? Not right now. Okay. Didn't see that. Okay, Betsy Clark, you are the bomb. You are an angel on earth and I'm so grateful to have you here. I'm sure, um, Betsy, I don't know what's happening with, um, with Jennifer's event. Is she doing her event in April? Um, I'd love to know. Oh, Jen, you're here. Hi, honey, we're missing you so much. It's been snowing like crazy. Mm. All right, Felicia had a question. Um, when networking, how do you pivot from pouring love on them and ways to support them to asking for support from them and how to specifically make the ask? Okay, so Felicia, is the question that you want them to support you? Is this in the networking situation? Could you clarify that for me, honey? Because that's how I'm reading it. Yes. Okay, cool. So here's the deal. You know how when we're giving and we're pouring in and then things, beautiful gifts come back to us from other places. I think that there's a, a little bit of that in this question, if I'm hearing it correctly. If someone, if I'm on a call with somebody and this happens, not very often, but this happens and it's really important because if we're talking about the sales process, if I'm in a conversation with somebody and I'm pouring into them and I'm loving on them and they don't even bother to say, so what do you need? They just say, oh, thanks, and they're out. What a gift. I clearly don't want to work with that person <laughs> because they're a meanie. You know, you know, you know what we call these people meanies. They're like, me, 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 right? All they do is talk about themselves. So not interested in working with that person. So I think it's a little bit of a gift in networking to uncover that, Felicia. And remember that um, that person is not your source. You know, source, God is your source. And so all these good things are going to be coming back and the giving and receiving, it's going to come back, but it may not come back from that conversation. And again, red flag, red flag. I, I want to love on that person, but I definitely don't want to like be in an intimate relationship with them if they're not a giver, right? Okay, cool. Um, sales with these reminders, thank you. Uh, she is online it. Uh, oh, so uh, Jennifer's doing her event online. Is she still doing April 24th to the 26th? Does anybody know? Because uh, if she is and so, oh, just one day. Okay, cool. So I'd love to have you guys with us um, if you're available, because I know you had a commitment there. We're going to be doing the 24th. And we have a, a really amazing, again, networking uh, event scheduled for that afternoon. And then we have a full day on Saturday. And then we have 
uh, a pot, half day. We're basically, basically we'll see how long it lasts on Sunday. I'm, I'm blocking the whole day off to be available. Um, so if you're able to come and play, and if not, then uh, Jennifer is Jennifer Deep Stratton, and she's a sales strategist, Cheryl. So some of the women in our community are members of her community as well, and we want to make sure that she, you know, so they weren't able to be with us at Limitless Women uh, because they were committed to be at Jennifer's event. So you go wherever it's good for you. Cheryl, you're with me. Um, so Lynette, uh, the dates for Limitless Women are April 24th, 25th, 26th. Um, we will be sending out information to you. So if you're in the Free Gift Friday emails, you're getting those already, uh, you'll see them there. If you're not in the Limitless Women group, we have a Limitless Women group. There's about 300 women in there. We're getting ready to actually open that. So it's getting ready to grow quite a bit. Uh, but if the Limitless Women group is where we post a lot of stuff about the upcoming events. So uh, send me a message on Facebook if you're not in that group and I'll make sure we give you the link so you can get connected. But April 24th, 25th, 26th. And what's very exciting, oh good. So Betsy put April 20th and 21st, sounds like might be Jennifer's event. So maybe you could go to both if you're home. Um, the other thing is exciting is we're not charging anything this year. Since we're not feeding you, normally we, we ask people to contribute for meals and materials. Um, but our whole focus is bringing you in, loving on you, training you. I have some amazing guest speakers coming in right now. I'm very excited about them. Just kind of keeping that um, quiet while we're confirming this, but also for leading and facilitating breakouts and sessions. Um, you know, we have a very spiritually connected community. We have a very, I, I feel like we have a divine group and with divine calling and, and I'm pretty protective about who is on stage. And so those of you that have been on stage, thank you again so much for your love and support of this community. I'm so, so grateful to you. And um, yeah, and then Sedona is canceled for Rose. You get to be with us too. Great, great, great. Um, I want to go back to Felicia's question because I think I saw that lots of people are typing right now. Blah, 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 blah. So um, let me see here. When you're networking, how do you get pouring them to the virtual? Excellent reminders. Felicia, I'm talking about connection calls, not necessarily sales calls. Um, connection calls for me, Felicia, are the same thing as networking, meaning that you're connecting with someone, and, unless you have a different definition, and you and I can talk about this offline, but um, you're connecting with someone to, again, build that relationship, build the rapport, contribute to them. If they're not a reciprocity person, then you know I wouldn't be scheduling a bunch of calls to be with them. You know, give them what you can give them and move on. You know, just move on. Um, should I pick up the phone to connect? That was from Anne. Uh, I don't know what she's saying here, sweetheart. Okay, two days. Da, da, da. Good to have, glad to have you with us, Ro. Um, regarding the warm up step, this is from Pamela. There are so many social media platforms. How do you determine which platform to focus on? Such a good question. Pamela, where do you like to play? Where do you find yourself? Where is it easy for you to go? I think Facebook, because that's where I see you. Is that the one? Thanks, Christina, for the beautiful love. Facebook, yeah. So focus on Facebook, because you already, you're already there. You have a presence there all the time. Um, I think the other place that I would see you going specifically because you have a platform around finance and business and building business and building money and wealth is LinkedIn. So those are, those are the two places I would have you play, for sure. Not that you couldn't do something on Instagram, but if you were going to choose one, I would go Facebook. Two, I would go LinkedIn. Three, I would go Instagram. Is that helpful? I hope. Okay. We've got some Q&As over here. Let's see what's going on. I just got my Facebook account closed. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Now it's going to Instagram, LinkedIn. Yeah, I don't know what that means. You got your Facebook account closed, hon. Um, other than maybe you have to open a new account. I don't know how that works for you, but I would say again, you're so visual and I would see you on Instagram. It's kind of a different, it's a different thing. Um, I would say Instagram and LinkedIn would be the best places for you to go for sure. Um, and, and I would just use your, you know, you're so bold and so compelling. So I would think Instagram would be a fun place for you to play. And then also, um, LinkedIn to build relationships and referrals because you're going to be, your desire is to speak in. So you're going to want to get out and get on stages again. And now is the time again. So right now meeting planners, hotels, everybody's a little nervous and freaking out, but this is going to pass, you know, and everybody's talking this morning about following what's happening in China and China has had no new cases in four days. Let's see how long it goes for the next few weeks. But I think again, we're going to keep moving forward. And all the stuff that you do now, like, you know, um, what we find in our world is that we're looking at speaking engagements usually like a year in advance. So 
the Cal, you know, I have a speaking agent who's doing that and, and hitting the hitting those people, if you will. Most of them are at least six months, more like a year or even 18 months out. So this percolation of right now of getting yourself positioned as a speaker, there's a lot of you on this call who are speakers. Get your relationships going. Look on LinkedIn for people who are meeting planners. Look for people that are hosting conferences and events. You, you know, LinkedIn is, is basically like Google. It's a search engine. Get in there and search what it is that you'd like to have happen. Speaking opportunities, you know, find those things, find those groups with other speakers. Groups are so valuable. There's so much good there. I could do like, I probably will do at some point a whole other class on that when we get ours figured out. We're, we're like learning all this cool stuff right now as we're expanding our community for donations. Um, so yeah, so I think search out what you're looking for on LinkedIn and start building relationships there. And I think what I find is LinkedIn, the relationships go fast. They go really fast, right? So it's something about like that personal, most people use their LinkedIn um, inbox like an email address. And, and I don't, I don't know how mine coming to my email. I just would make me crazy if too many notices, but um, I do when I'm actually, when I, when I, oh, here's a good, here's another tactic. Okay. Here's a Katerina. I was talking about it. Katerina Rando, who, again, if you don't know her, get connected to her. She's a generous lifetime legacy leader and she knows, and she's been teaching, you know, for 25 years on how to get booked on stages. So those of you that are speakers connect with Katerina right away, but this is a, what does she call it, Felicia? Like a super hot tip or a hot tip. Bing, bing, bing. That's what she always says. Bing, bing, bing. Super hot tip. So here's a super hot tip. And that is that when someone reaches out to you on LinkedIn, super tip alert. Thank you. <laughs> when someone reaches out to you on LinkedIn, what I want you to do is not just accept them or decline them, like open up their stuff. This is why it takes me a little while. Like right now I probably have 40 people waiting. Um, and I just schedule time on my calendar to get in there and do it. But I look at them, and so if this is kind of where I think it's kind of the divine date and the energy of they've they've reached out to connect with me for some reason. There's some synchronicity. So my LinkedIn profile is all about charity and philanthropy and growing businesses for purpose. And you know, I think we've got a pretty, I don't think we've got it right 100 right, but we've got a pretty good clarity on this is who we are, right? So if it's not some creepy dude, because sometimes that happens, but not so much anymore now that I'm in my 50s. Um, but if they've reached out to you, there's some synchronicity. So go to their profile before you accept them and see what they're up to. And then accept them if it seems like they could be a referral partner or a client or a VA for you. There's lots, lots of VAs on, on LinkedIn right now that are really active. Um, and write to them and say, I'd love to learn more about what you do. Can we have a telephone call? that starts that relationship. And I've gotten a lot of, I've got a lot of my team members that way, actually. Uh, yeah, three of them right now have come that way. Where I've just been like, oh, I love that this is what you're in business to do. We actually need this right now. Can we have a conversation? Super easy, super easy. And lots of followers. All right, so uh, Facebook closed. You're good now, I think, um, Anne. And uh, thought I would love this feature. Loved all the content. Oh, good, Tyra. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you. All right. Um, I have someone who I know is only saying no because of fears. I see it. They know it. Do I still just love on her for when she's ready or do I try to go deeper with her? Um, without knowing more about the, the specific client, this might be a good one for you and I to have a telephone call with, uh, with each other about Roe. I'd happy to help you with like, again, kind of more of the specifics. It's, it's more than fear. That's not actually what's holding her back. There's a trust factor that's probably not happening in that you're not, you're too close to it. You know how like Tracy Trottenberg says, you can't see your own eyebrows, you know, you're in it. So you think that's what's happening, but there might be something else. So if, if you, if it would be helpful, I'll have a call with you and we'll see if we can uncover something else. Some other specific questions you could ask her uh, to help her get real. And um, yeah, I just, that's my sense. My sense is there's something else to uncover with her rather than fear. Okay. And yes, always, always, always keep loving people. All right. I had a question about private Facebook groups to offer free support and guidance. What is your thought? Um, what I, my thought about that, Elena, is that you go into the group and people will be asking for what they want. So rather, um, rather than just going in and posting and saying, I'm, uh, you know, I'm an elder life care planner. And if you need help, contact me, because that's a little promoting what seems to work well in community building is to get into the group, look for people asking questions or looking for resources and become a resource. You start to become the expert. You start to become the person that they go to and they start watching and they start looking for you. 
And you can, in the thing, say, okay, here's uh, somebody wants to know something about Title 19. You write that in there, and then I'm happy to have a conversation. If I can be of help, just reach out. Here's my contact information. So to, I'm hoping that that makes sense to you. Is that making sense? I don't know what groups you're in right now, but we talked about this being uh, part of our next call, our next one-on-one -on -one call, you and I, um, to really look at what, what you have as assets currently on social media. That's actually kind of the, the agenda item that I have for us for our next call, but I'm not sure if that's what you, you know, if you've got other stuff you want to work on, I'm cool with that too. Does that help? I'm hoping that that helps. Uh, okay, so Roe wrote back, I think the trust factor is not strong enough yet. Her husband referred her to me and we probably went too fast. Um, Roe, you're really strong. You know, you're a force of nature. There's nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. And um, she may just need more courtship. She may need some more foreplay. She may need some more nurturing and marketing and value add. Um, so if, if there's a way to get her in gently or in a lower investment, like, you know, one of the, one of the things that worked really well for us in 2019 was creating the business school. So we had a place for women to come in because a lot of women, there was like a pent up desire to be with us as a legacy leader, right? At the higher ticket, but a fear factor of the investment. And so the school worked really well for us to bring them in at a $5,000 investment and have them, Get to know me, me get to know them, really nurture them and love them. And then several of them were able to make the leap into legacy leaders when it was the right time for them. And then some people just wasn't the right time. So that's okay. Or it may not be the right product, but it's important to have those things in your marketing where you have kind of lower ticket opportunities to connect like this and really build value and, and, and build the relationship so that they can build the trust. The trust is vital. Um, so Elena says, I'll stay in my lane and keep communicating on my business page, and then we can discuss a private page as communication builds and the need is present. Yeah, I think Elena, you and I just need to put our thinking caps on on our call of places of groups that you need to be in. And it's just something again to check in. I'm sure that there's places where people are looking for resources. And it's just again a Google search of the stuff that you know, your elders are struggling with. Those groups exist. And you being there as a trusted advisor is going to be beautiful uh, to start driving some traffic. I think it's a great way to do that. All right. So Ro, I've had to nurture a long time when a family member refers, different when a client refers. Okay. Well, that's interesting. All right. Good. All right. Does working through your process of sales make the difference if they're dealing with fear or what you just said, lower price options to come in and move up? I like free. I like free a lot. I like low cost places. Um, when I'm actually like, this is going to sound like a horrible analogy, but it's just like, let's say you've hooked the fish. Somebody's on the line. You actually know that they're in process and they're just not ready. I would rather keep loving on them, give them something free to do, and then talk to them in two weeks and say, are you ready now? Now I'm not saying I would do this indefinitely, but two or three phone calls, you know, if nothing else, you could change their life and do something fantastic for them without spinning out and worrying about how much you're giving. Think about what's their next step. Get them to tell you what they see their next step as and what would they need to make that next step to move them closer to you two working together if that's the goal and you believe that and they believe it. Now, if they say like, I don't want to work with you, then you're not having a phone call because now you're having a party in your own head. Makes sense? But if they're saying, yes, I want to work with you, I just need a little more time, great. So what would be the next step that you'll be taking and how can I support you with that? What do you need in the way of a resource or a, you know, a training or anything like that to help them feel confident? Listen, I give away so many copies of Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. I mean, really, they should like crazy amounts. And I just keep giving it to people that I know will really get value out of that book. That book changed my life, you know, almost 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, actually. So what can you do? What can you give? You know, how can you give more? without depleting yourself. All right, so um, Eleanor, you're good? Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, my love. Who else has questions? We have about 10 more minutes. If anybody has any other questions? Lynette, was that helpful? Good, I'm so glad, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, like I said, please reach out and let's get on a call. Right. If you would not mind, type into the chat for me what your biggest takeaway was from today. just a few words of what you found helpful because you speaking it will be helpful for other people hearing it. 
if you don't mind. Uh, I talked with someone this morning I perceive is not having integrity is really stressing me out. How do I deal with something like that? I have very good boundaries, Miss Lynette. And if someone's on integrity, they don't stay in my world. And it doesn't happen often. You know, it doesn't happen often. It really doesn't happen often. And when it does happen, I am um, really, uh, to use Sandra's words, bless and release them. If there's a way to do that, it might be a little difficult. If it's a family member, that's a whole other conversation you and I probably could have one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but I'd say for this, if it's somebody that, that's in the working environment, who else can help you? Who else can you uh, work with? How can we shift gears and get that person out of your sphere? Because there's no lack of humans. There's so many, so many humans. All right. Betsy Clark, thank you. I'm glad you feel that I'm so smart and generous. My pleasure, my love. But you know, it's a, if you believe what I'm saying, the giving cause is growing, it's a little self-serving. So just think about that. All right, now's the time. Hold on, you guys are popping, popping, popping. All right, let's see here. So now's the time for me to get into action. Fulsi. Absolutely, Carolyn, absolutely. All right, looking for groups I can provide value in, giving in the areas that will serve and allow me to also grow. Yeah, and I'll help you with that, Elena, because I think, again, there's some good opportunities for us there. Um, Anne says the power slash blessing of giving. Thank you. Gigi says, reminder of the importance of information confirmation. Yeah, it's literally like if there was one piece of the sales process that you took away from today, please use that one and use it frequently and use it, um, you know, use it to just, but use it in conversations. You'll be amazed at how that one step in a conversation can actually deepen your connection to a friend or a family member, or even, you know, like my adult daughter is here right now. There are times, you know, when I'm just like, okay, just stop what you're doing. Really listen to what she's saying. Repeat it back. Make sure you've got it. You know, I'm doing this internal thing, internal dialogue for myself to really be like, is this what you wanted me to hear? It's a very generous way of listening. And, um, and it just deepens love. It just deepens love. All right. So clarity around the marketing funnel and focusing on what I can get. What can I give? Okay, good. Pamela, I don't know if you have a free offer right now. And if you, I think you do, I think when you and I talked, you had something that you were either crafting or you um, uh, were thinking about. So again, if I can help in any way with getting that clarified for you, you need multiples. So if I have about 10 free offers right now um, and I'm driving my team crazy because they all need to be updated with new content. But I use these like three word things. If you go look at them, you'll see they're old ones like speed up success, see profit sooner, never be overwhelmed again. I look for little tag things that I know is easy for my people to remember. Laura, free book, free gift Friday. Those are all URLs that we use to drive people to um, opt-ins. And that's important because we all need to build our list in our community. Oh, Christine, thank you. Christina, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you feel supported, sweetheart. I'm really glad to have you with me. And I'm sorry that we're not together in California, but I'm glad we're going to be together virtually. Don't give fast action discounts. No, 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 no. Don't discount. Keep price integrity. Give a bonus. Yes, thank you, Anne. That's a great takeaway. The piece on goodwill. How bias giving, no matter what the outcome is, there's always good going on and we may not see it. Yeah, I believe that that's just a good human being practice. Um, thanks, Ro. Kathy says, just love how you are living a, a living example of generosity and love and service. Thank you, sweetheart. And the importance of coming from this place. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, Kathy. Um, I didn't grow up in a family where there was generosity and love. I grew up in a very violent, very poor, um, very disrupted, just dysfunctional family. And I was sexually molested as a child for seven years. And what I'm telling you is that this work that I'm teaching today is what I've actually learned as I've been healing my own poverty consciousness, my own scarcity, my own not enoughness, right? It's like really going through that um, eye of the needle is kind of what people say, um, has, has changed me. You know, I, I feel like there were people who saw me when I couldn't see myself, that I was a good student. That's why it's important for these things, like the training, the education, take the distinctions and play with them. You know, I literally in my early 20s used to practice at like the grocery store and the gas station and like different places, I would practice saying something nice to someone. I mean, like I literally did it every day. It was like a conscious practice of being kind because I had not ever experienced kindness as a child from my family of origin. I had a babysitter who really loved me and nurtured me and she's still, she'll be 80 in January and she's still the love of my life. Um, 
she showed me a lot. But I'd say outside of that, you know, I didn't live in an environment that was safe or comfortable and there was not any words of kindness or generosity. So uh, thank you for the beautiful reflection. I appreciate that. And what I'm saying to you is like, this is an opportunity for all of us to really practice kindness and practice generosity. And I promise you the gift is in the giving. What comes back to you is, is uh, you know, humbling, humbling at best. All right, so Lynn Bruce, if I heard you correctly. Yes, information confirmation, I love that, darling. Uh, Debbie, love re rehearing sales with these. Oh good, I'm so glad you're here. It's nice to see you. Listening and repeating back in their own words. Yes, my love. All right, Catherine, so the need to stay in the mode of how to serve in your marketing and sales process and not shift out of that to my concerns. That's great, Catherine, because again, we tend to want to give people what we think they want. And this training came out of result of people asking me again and again, how do I do this? I'm like, okay, great. Let's do it. Let's just do a training on it. I'm doing a training next Saturday, by the way, I didn't even tell you, I'm doing a training next Saturday um, on, it's called, hold on, I'll tell you what the title is. Oh, how to focus and stay on track during distracting times because I have lots of my friends who are coming to me saying, I can't focus, I'm freaking out. So we're gonna do a class on focus next Saturday. If you're interested, come be with us. Um, Felicia, keep pouring love and take a good look at LinkedIn. Yeah, 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 good, good, good. Yeah, I, I feel like there's something in LinkedIn for you um, as, the, as like kind of the edge, right? So, so we wanna just be very, um, I want you on Instagram, Felicia. That's where I feel like, again, and I think your team is working on that already and you're working on that, but I think Instagram actually is a better platform for you. So Facebook, in, in my order for you would be Facebook, Instagram, then LinkedIn. Um, but just building relationships in LinkedIn could be fantastic for your speaking platform. I'm not sure how great it's going to do for driving traffic or clients. That remains to be seen, but I know for sure your speaking platform, that could be helpful. All right, darling. Um, Gigi, importance of groups. Yes. Again, just think about there's groups of people that have come together and raised their hand and said, I'm into this. So they're all together in one place. So if you know what your avatar is, if you know who your person is, go to where your person is in groups. I have a client right now who works with highly sensitive people. I don't think she's on this call right now, but I saw a group today that I'm going to turn her on to for introverted women, introverted women business owners. I was like, oh, and there was like 8,000 people there. I'm like, perfect. All right. The distinction of information confirmation versus marrying. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Catherine Woods, the information confirmation is a great reminder. Thanks, Catherine. Um, stop pitching. Family at gun shows, sort of a different scenario, but could ask a different question. Yeah. Um, I think, again, your avatar for the, the uh, range, Cheryl, is going to be very different than your avatar for uh, balancing books. And so I think that there's some things there we want to look at as far as who the avatar is and how you, you uh, relate to them and how you market to them. However, um, the piece about not pitching is really about you not wasting your energy, you know, really just being grounded. When we are like trying to push and posture and put ourselves like, this is what we do and this is why we're great and da 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 da, and we're trying to be good enough, that energy is just not only not great landing on the other side, but it also doesn't feel good to us. It's depleting, right? It's depleting. So we don't want to do that. All right. So, Pamela, you have two offers. Great. I'm so glad. Okay. So, Cheryl, you're so reliable, you're relatable. Thank you. My 24 year old grandson walked in, works with us, and was drawn in to listen. Oh, that's so good. I can't wait to meet him. You know, I love that you guys are so close. I'm hoping that I get to meet him soon when it stops snowing and uh, I can come out and visit you. All right. So, good. A great source on boundaries. Boundaries are priceless and always need to be strengthened. And that's why I'm such an advocate of self care. You know, really, really stay in your self-care, especially now. It's important for your physical health, your emotional health, your spiritual health. It's really good. Um, thank you for sharing your personal story. Thank you, Kathy. Love you so much, Ro. Thank you. I love you too, sweetie. This is a gem and so are you. Okay, great. So Catherine says, I need a class on staying focused in times of stress. Okay, great. So next week, same time, same place. It'll be a different link because, you know, we're setting up a webinar piece, but we'll definitely be doing um, definitely be doing a class on focus and then navigating the family. I'm going to make a note about that. That's great, sweetie, because a lot of women I know are, are facing this also, especially if they have young people. I mean, I have adult children, but one's here and I'm trying to get the other one here. In, I don't know if I can get my steps on my third one here, but I know I'm trying to get my son here from Texas right now. So um, having the, the home, the uh, family at home. Yeah, that's an important piece. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate your kindness and uh, me being authentic. And a big hug. All right, a big hug from, I think this is Carolyn, maybe Rose Hart, uh, trying to homeschool. Yeah, trying to homeschool. So, so working from home with, uh, with babies at home. 
All right, so that's the agenda. We've got, uh, I've got a lot of other stuff to cover with you next week on how to know which activities are essential, which ones are not, how to focus, how to um, get done what actually gets results and stop wasting time. Sorry, I'm playing with my hair. It's weird because I can see myself. Um, so yeah, so we'll work on that. And if you have other questions this week, they'll come up and I'll like this around homeschooling. And um, I have two friends right now, I was on a call with two days ago who both have six-year-old twins. And I was joking with them, but not really. I was actually telling the truth. When my children were little, um, I really tried to work my business around their school hours. But when they were home, like on a holiday or something like what we're going through right now, uh, I made sure they were well and safe and had everything they needed. Um, but probably after the age of like six or seven, I said, if you're not bleeding, don't knock on my door. Do not come in here right now while, while I'm working. I, I only need an hour. I want to give you my full attention when I get out of here, but right now I'm working. And if there's not blood involved, don't come in. And I, my daughter, <laughs> may say that because she's here. She's like, that was the truth. No blooding. She used to call it blooding instead of bleeding. No blooding, no knocking. All right. So, and that note, it's a uh, 2.30 uh, here. So I love you all. I really hope this was helpful. I hope I got to everybody's questions. It looks like I did. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out through Facebook. Um, hoping that you'll be with us at Limitless Women in April. I promise to give you more and more details. And again, if you want to come next Saturday, I may just keep doing these as they're coming up just because um, you know it's valuable for me to get my content really clear and be it gives me an opportunity to be of service and connect with you guys. It feels great to do. So if it's good for you, then let me know and I'll just you know come up with some different subjects and keep doing them. Okay. All right. Love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, for all your support. I so appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon.